Halo co-op is one of the coolest things about Halo, and back in Halo 2, it was kind of fun to see two Master Chiefs or two Arbiters. But what if there was a way that we could actually manipulate what Player 2 looked like and get to choose who really would be the best sidekick for Master Chief and the Arbiter to bring along on their misadventures? Surprisingly enough, there's actually a way to pull this off by manipulating the in-game code without having to modify the game. And honestly, this stuff gets wild. But before we jump into it, have you ever wondered what if the Master Chief on his free time ran a flea market in Montgomery, Alabama? How on earth would he get the information out to his customers as to when and when not his store was open? Honestly, we're pretty sure he would use Squarespace to build a website. And they actually sponsored this video. So from being able to manage your own website and having a ton of different customization tools to really make it your own, Squarespace is your number one platform to build a great website and run your business. More about that at the end of this video. Okay, so like we said, there's actually a way that in co-op, you can manipulate the in-game code that selects which player model to load for player two by doing a series of actions. Now, to pull these glitches off to make the engine do what you want it to do, you have to kind of understand how the game's code works. And I'm no computer science major, so I'm gonna have to do the best I can to break down some of this stuff in the most clear and concise way I can possibly try to pull off. Now, fortunately enough for us, Halo Creation who are great friends of this channel, helped us significantly with this video. They went ahead and did the glitches on every single level for us, and they gave us access to all of the footage for this video. And trust us, without their help, we probably wouldn't be able to make this video because I don't know if Luke and I have enough big brain power to try to do this on our own. So what is it exactly that it takes to manipulate that player two model in Halo 2? Well, essentially, when you take a look at the Halo 2 code, the game's engine spawns each item based on where you are and which level you're on. Every single item and individual model in the game is essentially assigned a unique code. So whenever you're playing co-op, every time player two spawns in, the game engine chooses to spawn the specific code that correlates to the Master Chief or the Arbiter as the player model. However, by utilizing some glitches and tricks along the way, you could actually break the game's code slightly to select a different model from the pool of potential potential models found within the loading area, and with all that, you can essentially hijack the player model so that it becomes in use whenever a player spawns. Now essentially this is possible because when building Halo 2, Bungie built the engine in a way that utilizes something called a fixed array system, so that with all the different object types, they could easily keep track of which items they were working on. By having this system in place, the engine uses what is called a datum index to organize all of the items items in the level's pool, which tells the game which item to find in the object pool whenever the game is called upon it. That's a very bare bones way of saying it. It's already way beyond me, but it only gets more complicated from here. Now the code gets a little bit weirder as we go forward. Essentially, there's code in place that works with each item and each spawn, and it takes two different factors into consideration to equate to a single output that the game is then able to figure out what object needs to be spawned. Now, while we have this pool that serves as a list of sorts with every object in it, it also keeps track of all of the new things that are spawned along the way. Essentially, this list that keeps track of all of the things that get spawned incrementally as you go on, in coding terms, is called the salt. So for instance, in Halo 2, every time a grenade is thrown or a bullet is shot, a new object technically is being spawned. So the pool, or this list of all of the objects, will keep track of the quote-unquote salt incrementally. So so this number right here, every time a shot is fired or any type of grenade is thrown or anything is spawned in, will always increase as the game is played. It won't ever go down as this number is just keeping track of the total number of things that have been spawned already. And for the purpose of this video, the salt actually serves as part of the code that is used in the game's engine to select which item spawns in from the pool of potential items. Now the second part of the code, we're gonna go ahead and reference as the index here. So we have the salt and the index. Now the index, on the other hand, in the simplest way possible, is like a list of all of the objects. They're all essentially numbered, and if the game calls upon one item from the list to be used, it can be taken away from the list 
list and then later on returned, meaning that unlike the salt, the number in the index can be increased and decreased as objects go in and out of the potential list. This essentially gives us a value here and combining this value with the salt is the main code that we're looking for for this video to manipulate. So with this in place with how in general the engine works when it comes to spawning things, I mean, how on earth did people figure out how to break Halo 2 even more than what we already know all of these years later? Now, of course, the people who figured this stuff out are veteran Halo players. Dr. Biz, Monopoly, Hark, and Nibre work together on figuring this out, and they even put a very detailed explanation as to how this goes, and, and if it wasn't for that explanation, we probably would also be lost while trying to explain this. But essentially, by utilizing glitches in Halo 2, we can actually manipulate that code combination of the salt and index. In Halo 2, when a co-op player dies, the game adds a new player model into the object pool, either Master Chief or Arbiter, and then tries to spawn it wherever the living player is. But if the remaining alive player does what we're gonna call in this video as pinching the spawn, which essentially is putting themselves in a place where the game simply knows he won't ever be able to respawn player two, like in a place where there's enemies or if you're just doing something that won't let the other player spawn in. And during that time where the game's trying to spawn the player in, you restart the mission, something unintended happens in the game's code. The game will go ahead and reset the object pool, but it keeps the memory from what happened right before the level restarted, and essentially it tries to use the same number where that player model that had left the index was originally located at, and since that player model isn't there anymore, the game then renumbers everything in the index and spawns the next thing on the list in the pool. Essentially, the game kind of goes into a coding limbo. So then, when player two dies again and is supposed to respawn, the game doesn't see the chief model and assumes that it already respawned the player and instead moves down the list, renumbering everything to spawn the next item in the pool. However, even after all of that, it even gets more complicated than that as the engine has a second measure in place to verify that this datum code number is correct before it would actually spawn something in. And if the number is not correct, it will reset the code and try again, which essentially doesn't allow this glitch to work. So if it wasn't more confusing already, it only gets more confusing, but all of the people involved in figuring out this glitch figured out that the salt, that number that only incrementally goes up, they can essentially predict where they are in the object pool and trick the game into thinking it's spawning the correct thing and essentially hijack the respawn, which causes this glitch to be pulled off. <laughs> now, if you're lost, that's okay. We're just gonna move on and figure out what the results of all of this is. But the abridged version, the game's engine essentially keeps track of time and space and by resetting the checkpoint after blocking a respawn, we essentially use the space stone to trick the game into spawning a different object from a potential list of objects. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so now that class is dismissed, let's see how the guys at Halo Creation played through Halo using this glitch. So jumping into the first level, when they set up the glitch, they decided, why not be a grunt? How will Master Chief play through Halo 2 with a grunt as his sidekick? Now, starting things off, they had to actually betray all of the Marines and beat Sergeant Johnson away because up until the next loading point, they'll actually try to kill the grunt player and the enemies actually will never try to kill him because, you know, allegiances are already made even this early in this run. There were some pretty hilarious moments through their run of the first level. We got to see a grunt using a turret, which was kind of interesting. We see the grunt looking at the station exploding in space. We see the grunt player betraying the Master Chief player. Also, you have to know if you try to throw a grenade, it won't work. It'll just fall to your feet. So if you don't want to die, you know, don't throw a grenade. And also, if you're playing through as a grunt, you're not really tall enough to jump at times. So you can get stuck in some corners and you're going to have to have a buddy push you out of the way. Honestly, I kind of like the Master Chief grunt combo. Like I'd love a good buddy cop movie with Master Chief and the grunt just kind of doing their thing. Going on to the outskirts, the guys at Halo Creation used pinching inside the Pelican to manipulate the respawn here and manipulated the code by killing him twice. And sure enough, we're able to see Chief and the grunt again. Of course, the Marines and Johnson will do whatever it takes to kill that player. So you're going to have to make sure you're paying attention and defending him the best that you can. The grunt will become friends with the hunter, which is interesting. Now, unfortunately, the grunt can't ride along in a warthog. It's super disappointing because, you know, this would be the best combo ever. But essentially, the grunt will automatically try to dodge the warthog. So he can't even stay on top of it if you wanted to just ride on the top. Oh, yeah, you can get some good close ups of the grunt here. And you can even let the grunt 
front player use one of the shadow turrets. Going on to Metropolis, on this level they couldn't actually do the grunt glitch here just because the grunt spawns really far away and it'd be a pain to go through the process of that. And the Halo Creation guys actually reached out to Hark who helped them figure out how to utilize one of the glitches here to get the best results. Now for the setup on this level, they essentially had to just kind of eliminate some of the extra Marines, but this helps manipulate the offset in the code. But sure enough, with some manipulation, they became a phantom, which if you can't have a grunt as your partner, why not have an entire phantom? That just sounds like the best thing ever. Honestly, the phantom just kind of breaks the game on a whole nother level, and there's a lot of other glitches they had to do to pull through this level. But there was just really weird occurrences like the phantom controlling the warthog. They later accidentally broke the scorpion that was carried by the pelican, which allowed the regular player to get on board the pelican, which is kind of cool in its own right. The phantom can easily get stuck in various objects along the way, but sure enough, they were able to get to the scarab and take out the enemies. But it's just really interesting to look at this level played with a phantom. Going on to the arbiter, we can go back to having a grunt player once again. Hooray! This level took a lot of specific timing and figuring out how to do the pinching just right to pull this one off. But it is kind of interesting this time around we have a heretic grunt, so it's a little different appearance. There are some fun visual glitches along the way, like when the grunt player activates the elevator, kind of looks like a ballerina. And there are a little bit of parts that are slower because of how slow the grunt actually walks. Maybe, you know, Master Chief should pick him up and do some sort of piggyback challenge or something. And oddly enough, the grunt can in fact pilot a banshee, though it doesn't look completely right. It's a little weird. And the grunt player can't actually shoot anything. So instead he just kind of splattered everything in his way. Going on to the Oracle, there was a couple of problems with some despawn issues and game crashing issues along the way here. But during the setup stage, you can actually play it as the flood a little bit, even though they're a little weird to handle. But honestly, this level just has a lot of random things that happen, which can be a little frustrating if you're trying to run through it. Things just exploding or the flood player randomly dying. Honestly, just a lot of weird visual glitches along the way. And then they kind of settled in on trying to do it as a heretic elite to see how that goes along the way. But the game still ends up crashing. So Delta Halo's next. Hark also helped out on Delta Halo along with the last one when they were trying to find out methods to get through stuff. So shout out to him again. But essentially to set up the glitch in this one, you have to have the right RNG at the start. So the enemies and allies do not start shooting immediately and you can better predict what code you're gonna have. You gotta do a lot of things like kill all the allies super quickly. You have to do a scarab jump and then perform a grenade launch with boom feather Sputnik skulls on to prevent player two from respawning all the way for under the bridge. And you kind of have to push a little further into the level by doing all of these crazy things, but eventually player two can become a sniper jackal. Of course, with all the setup required, they had to use the scarab skull, which, you know, can always cause for some interesting things to happen. There's just a lot of weird things happening, like, you know, getting killed by a piece of a ghost. But nonetheless, they were able to complete this level with a jackal as Master Chief's sidekick, though I still think the grunt is the best one yet. Okay, next up, we're going into regret. Right away, there's a bunch of quick steps you have to do here to make sure you're manipulating the code correctly, but they actually pulled off letting player two respawn as a drone this time. And you can actually make the drone fly, but the way to do it is kind of inconsistent. And the safest way was to get player one just to kill himself repeatedly, so he'd respawn behind the drone and when the drone is on top of the ramp, at some point, for whatever reason, he just starts flying. You can actually skip through a large chunk of this level by flying as the drone, though you actually can't get to the last building because things won't load. It causes the other player to respawn. After hours of playing on this level, the player who was on the drone figured out he could actually climb up walls kind of like a spider, and honestly, he kind of got a little carried away climbing onto literally everything after making that discovery, even though they were hours into this playthrough. But nonetheless, they carried on until the end of the level. Unfortunately, the drone player can't board regret, so regular Master Chief will have to do that, but I like the drone player here too. It's a good contender for the best sidekick award. Okay, jumping into Sacred Icon. Once again, they had to have the perfect formula of skulls and quickly killing things at the beginning of the level so that they can pull this stuff off correctly. But this time around, they actually had the player become a constructor, which is kind of hilarious because the constructor player can even pick up weapons like dual wielding SMGs, which actually appear one on top of another. There's even just some really weird reload animations that are hilarious. I mean, just imagine this constructor being like, where the flood? I'm gonna go get them. And honestly, after just so much trial and error and resetting that they had to do for this run, they did get this magical moment with a constructor using a sword, which kind of makes the whole thing worth it. But they did push through and complete this level. On the next level, this time around, they decided to pull off having 
player two as the enforcer and actually did some trial and error to let it so the enforcer can pilot a ghost. And honestly, there's some narrow places along the way that's a little painful to actually get through. And you wanna make sure the enforcer does not get stuck upside down because, you know, death happens. And pretty much this level can almost all the way be completed. However, after a cutscene, the level respawns the character as a regular character. But honestly, this is pretty cool that they even made it this far. Now they definitely messed around a bit on the level Gravemind, of course, playing around with the Cortana player model to see what would let them move further. But ultimately, the only way they could find a way to push through this level was by having Master Chief sidekick become a dead brute. So, you know, it was a long playthrough of them having to drag a brute through the entire level, but they did it just to prove you can in fact beat this level with a different type of player model. So kudos to dead brute as Master Chief sidekick here. But this next level uprising is really interesting because this time around they went with going full on alive brute. This is something I always thought would be really interesting in Halo to see if they one day did some sort of multiplayer type game mode that let you play as brutes. Cause I mean, you can play as an elite and a Spartan, throw brutes in there, make some interesting stuff happen and we get to experience it. They try to do some crazy jumps like parkour. They try dual wielding, but it freezes the animation and causes the brute just to moonwalk. There's some hilarious T posing animation that happens at times, but ultimately they're able to clear this level as well with a brute. Going on to high charity, they actually used a different method than the typical pinching method. And this one was a relatively new one. It's slightly different and it was found by Hark, but it relies heavily on RNG. And this game essentially has a seed with random variables and it gets just so much more confusing than what my scope is. But you just have to hope that you have good luck and get a favorable seed. And with a lot of trial and error, they actually pull it off so that player two respawns as a human flood this time. So, you know, Chief can just chill with his dead homies. Now, this is one of those levels you can't fully complete, but just it's so cool because of how difficult this level is to even pull off the pinching glitch that they were able to at least have something happen here and run around as, you know, the human flood. And finally, the final level, the just okay journey. They have to jump off a cliff a couple of times to make sure the offset in the code is proper so that they can manipulate the stuff. But ultimately, they were able to pull this thing off and play as the hunter, which is crazy because the hunter player can actually shoot the hunter beam and can also melee, but there's not an animation for it. Unfortunately, he can't pick up weapons, but it is really funny. I mean, look, the hunter's teabagging a brute here because why not? You can kind of just mess around with him. You get to free your buddies. You get to pose with your buddies. Unfortunately, the hunter can't fly a banshee. And so, you know, this method works just as well. The hunter player actually can't fall to his death from this fall, which is really interesting later on in the level. And honestly, he's able to complete this level with the hunter as well. And that's just such a cool accomplishment by the guys over at Halo Creation. We really, really enjoyed looking through all of this stuff. And they made really great notes also for us. If they hadn't gone through the notes of their run, this would be so much of an undertaking. And it's really cool to be able to put a spotlight on some of these really awesome runs that other Halo players are doing out there, especially when it's something that doesn't involve modding or anything like that. This is just pure manipulation of Halo 2 on the MCC. And once again, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Whenever we have brands like Squarespace who support us like this, it really helps us make content for you guys on a more regular basis. Squarespace really is great because just besides building a clean and professional looking website, they also have a lot of tools that will help you in whatever aspect you're trying to specialize in along the way. We really love their analytics feature that gives insight into who's visiting the website to what type of traffic you're getting and the fact that you can even schedule your posts ahead of time. It really makes managing a website so much easier as you can just put constant updates and little posts along the way all ahead of time. And even better, Squarespace can even serve as a platform to purchase your domain names, which can be really important because if you're trying to start something up. The best way to make it official and real is to just snag that website domain name and have yourself a professional looking platform to showcase whatever you're working on. And if you go to squarespace.com forward slash rocket sock, you can save 10% on your first purchase or website domain. But hey, if you liked this video, can you take a quick moment first? Double check you are in fact subscribed down below with notifications on. It helps us out a lot. We get to do more stuff like this and that's cool. Also, if you want to talk with us on Twitter, you can follow me at Rocket Elijah and you can also follow Luke at Rocket Sloth Luke. So feel free to follow us on there and communicate with us a bit. We would kind of appreciate it. But otherwise, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you all next time.